Hey guys, it's Christy here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd do a first impression and review of the Cookie and Cosmetics pigments. There are three pigments in here. They've just arrived today and I'm going to do a full run through of the whole consumer experience. So if you're interested in that, just keep on watching. So I ordered these three metallic crushed pigments off the Cookie and website. It is cookieand.co. And the first time I went on there, I went on on my mobile and I couldn't actually find anywhere to actually buy the product. When I was on the website, I just got the different drop downs here and I did go to pigment there. And whenever I went there, it didn't actually give me any option to buy any products. Maybe it was sold out or something. So I just left it. I then went on a second time. It was maybe a few weeks later. And I was scrolling through the website and I realized it's really, really not compatible with mobile phones, which is very, very strange to me. If you're going to be launching a new product and you're going to be selling it online, I just think that your website should be compatible with mobile phones. So I'll just show you here. I've clicked on pigments. And if I scroll down, it just gives you a little bit of information there and then it shows you more kind of half photos there. And then it just goes down here and everything's sort of like cut off. Um, I, you can't even really see what you're buying. It just says out of stock. You can see a little bit of information here, but it's all cut off. When I, this happened whenever I actually went on to buy it, I didn't actually really know what I was ordering because it is, the information's cut off all there. Um, it says something about something of three um, something included. So I didn't actually know what I was ordering. I went on hit order. I realized that I was getting a pack of three pigments and it turns out after it arriving that it means the brush is included. But I just think the website could definitely be a lot better. It's all cut off and you know you can't scroll across to see the rest of the text. So I to be honest didn't really know what I was ordering until I actually clicked on you know the order button or whatever it said and it told me that I was ordering three um, pigments so that wasn't a great sort of consumer experience. When I did go to order it it said that it was $14.99. I thought this was kind of strange that on the website it says that the pigments were formulated in England, John Cookians from England. I sort of thought I would be charged in Great British Pounds because I'm in the UK, I'm in Northern Ireland. So I thought it was kind of odd that someone who is from England, the formula is formulated in England, it's developed in England, charged me in US dollars. I didn't get any sort of option to change that. So I paid $14.99. Because of that, I had to pay a bank charge to get it converted. So the foreign exchange conversion, which is fine if I know I'm ordering from someone in the US, like Kylie Jenner or, you know, someone who is in the US and I'm pretty sure like before I order, I'm like, I'll probably get charged in US dollars. But I just thought it was kind of strange that, um, that that happened, but um, I also had to pay $4.99 shipping. You only get free shipping if it's over $80, which I thought was quite hefty. Makeup Revolution give you free shipping over 30 pounds. Tarte give you free shipping, I think if it's over $50, which is still quite high, but $80 I thought was quite a lot but it is free international and domestic shipping if it's over $80. When I placed my order, I got a confirmation email and then I also got a tracking email on that same day. It said that I'd been given a USPS tracking number, so I was able to track the order um, the whole way through to delivery. I realized at that point that it was actually coming from Chicago. I had thought because of what I've said previously about it being developed in England, John Cookians from England, that there would be a local store where it would come from. I did place my order on the 16th of December and it didn't actually arrive until the 27th of December. And given that it was Christmas, um, you know, I can understand that it was sort of delayed that way, but it was also the fact that it was coming from Chicago. So I was kind of disappointed that it was coming all the way from there because I'd hoped to get this video up really quickly, get the review out, um, let you guys see my review. And it was sort of disappointing to me that it was coming from so far away because then I knew I'm probably not gonna get this review up before Christmas. It does, however, say on the website, Cookie and ships internationally. We stock our products across Europe, the, the United States of America, Canada, and Australia. Your order may be sent from another country if insufficient stock is available in your country. And please note, we do not control and are not responsible for customs charges your country may inflict. So that, you know, is a sort of disclaimer that you may order it from within the UK, but it might not be shipped from within the UK due to insufficient stock. Um, but I mean, yeah, it just kind of was like, oh, okay, it's coming all the way from Chicago. I guess I'm gonna have to wait quite a while to get this. I might also get custom charges, which um, I hadn't really factored in. Luckily I didn't and 
It took from the 16th of December until the 27th to be delivered. So when it arrived, this is what I got. It has his little logo there in silver, sort of shiny writing. The packaging is a matte velvet material, which is actually really nice. It shows you the three shades there. I'll just turn it over. You have a little line that runs the whole way along the packaging. So all the way around it, which is quite nice as well. On the back, you have a little message from John Cookian. Um, it says, beloved cookie fam, thank you for everything. I love you more, XO. It then gives you some details on the shades. It gives the all the ingredients just down at the bottom here. And then whenever you turn it like this and you open it in here, it just says hi. And it has two little embossed hearts on either side there. The three pigments that you do get in this are Salvage, Titties and Shook. So Salvage, it says on the back here, is a lustrous purple with a cherry undertone. Titties is a, to be honest, I can see why he called it this because he says it a lot on his channel, but it makes it very awkward for me to say, you know, I just, I don't really like a name like that. I don't like saying that on camera, if you know what I mean. It makes me feel awkward. If I'm saying to my friends like, oh, I have this great eyeshadow, it's called Titties. It just, it makes me cringe inside but he called it that anyway. Um, it's a seductive burgundy with a rich wood undertone and Shook is an intense orange with a pearlescent undertone. So I have opened this up and just had a look. When I opened it, I just got an overwhelming smell of paint. Um, it was like, what is that smell? And I've recently um, been doing quite a, bit of, quite a bit of painting and I was just like, wow, it either smells like a mix of paint or, or paint stripper and it was a very very strong smell to be to be honest um which uh, it's not a smell that I particularly like or would think of oh you know that's a great eyeshadow smell but anyway um I'll just open it up and show you how the inner packaging looks so here is the first eyeshadow here it's called shook it is shade 116 and I'll just show you the inside. So it's literally just like a pop-up here and then it opens like this and here's the eyeshadow here. And then here we have Salvage, shade 112. There it is there. And now we have the shade Titties, 114, and there it is there. You also get a little sort of brush. I wouldn't really call it a brush, but it comes in this silver packaging, which isn't sealable on either side, which Kind of weird to me. It comes in some plastic packaging and it just has Cookian's name in silver writing on it there. I prefer actual brushes these days. These are good for packing on eyeshadow but not good for blending whatsoever. So I just tend to use a flat packing brush and then use a blending brush to blend out the edges so I don't actually feel any need for this. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to chuck it away. I think it would have been better to just have a little brush in here rather than this. In terms of the outer packaging, I think it's nice. The only thing is that it turned up and it was kind of ripped in the corner here, but I think it's nice packaging. It looks nice. It feels nice. The inner packaging is complete and utter SH1T. I mean, like, could any less effort have gone into this? The whole thing about launching a product is that it's difficult to do. You know, you have to have a great website. Well, technically you should have a great website. Um, the shipping process and the ordering process should all be smooth. When it arrives, the customer should be happy with the packaging and also with the palette that they receive. This is not in a palette whatsoever. It's literally just in these little sort of lab containers and I just think it shows a real lack of effort. There's absolutely no branding on this really at all. Um, there's nowhere for me to really put these. I wish they'd come in a little palette where all the three shades were in there. And I just think it really shows a lack of brand effort to release something like this, to be honest. I feel like it's half finished, like it was rushed to market, almost like someone just wants to rush something to market just to monetize it. I don't know John Cookian at all. I just feel like disappointed to have paid $14.99 and to have received such awful packaging, to be honest. Even if you buy a single eyeshadow, it usually comes in a little sort of nice container with a lid. NYX do sell little single eyeshadows that come in a little leaflet and then you lift them out and it's literally just the eyeshadow. But I just feel like, you know, those shades are designed to be put into little Z palettes to make up your own sort of palette. This here 
is not magnetized so it will not go into a Z palette. So it's not like you could sort of say, well, the packaging doesn't really matter to me because I can just put it in a magnetic palette and, you know, make up my own sort of palette that I like with all my shades that I like because this actually can't be put into a Z palette so it has to stay in this packaging and I just think a lot more effort could have been put into this especially for a first release as well I think a first release is really really important to get your brand right and send the right message to your customers and I do feel a little bit disappointed that it turned up in this packaging but anyway let's move on in terms of the smell it has a really odd smell um, it's, it smells very astringent. It smells either like very alcoholy, so like paint stripper. It just smells very, very chemically. It's not a very pleasant smell. Hopefully, you know, once it's on my face and things, it will dissipate. I won't be able to smell it. Um, but it is not a pleasant smell whatsoever. I would rather it smell like nothing, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah, it smells atrocious. There are rumors about that this is actually a product from AliExpress. I don't know. That's just sort of a rumor that I've seen out there. These are the shades here. They're from a company called F Focaler. They are um, very, very similar shades and people are saying that they are literally just repackaged versions of this product and they have just literally been repackaged in this here. Um, who knows? I don't have the AliExpress shades. Maybe I'll get them and swatch these side by side but maybe that's why the packaging isn't great because it has literally just been taken from AliExpress, who knows, and just repackaged into this minimal packaging. So my initial experience of the packaging is mixed, but I guess what really matters is whether these perform well. So I'll be moving on to that in a moment, but that could be the redeeming factor with this product. So let's just wait and see and pray to God that it can redeem itself. Before we move on to the swatches, which I'm going to do swatches of all of these, finger swatches and brush swatches, and then I'm going to also try on the product, is the cost. I have touched upon the cost, but I just wanted to get into that in more detail. $14.99 seems like a pretty good price, but I just feel like the product is unfinished. I feel like the colors work together. They're cohesive, but they're not complete. I feel like to use these three shades together and create an eye look, I'll need to have a transition shade, um, which I'll need to get from another palette. I feel like it would have been better to bring out a quad, so have a nice matte transition shade, similar to something like this here. And that could just be put all over the lid, help to sort of blend everything together. But the way it currently stands, I am going to have to use another palette to create a look here. It would have been nice to just have them as a little quad in something like this here. This does have nine shades, but you can just imagine, you know, like four little shades in little packaging like this here. This is a MAC um, little eyeshadow palette and it would have been easy to store. It would have helped me to create a complete look with the, with the eyeshadows. So I feel like for $14.99, I am getting some nice looking shades. I don't know how they perform yet, but I won't be able to create a whole look with this. I'm also conscious that the website markets this brand as almost like a luxury brand on the website it says cooking and experience like no other so i paid for this product thinking it was going to be really really luxury the way it turned has turned up is not very luxury i feel like i could go and buy a makeup revolution palette for cheaper this is the soft times makeup revolution eyeshadow palette it has so many shades in it there with which you could make a really really complete look this is only 10 british pounds and these are really good quality eyeshadows. So for £10, I can buy all these shades, really good quality, yet for $14.99 um, US dollars, I'm only getting three shades, not very well packaged. So that was another sort of disappointing factor to me. I also wanted to talk about John Cookie and himself. To be honest, I bought this product really just wanting to review the product you know, the whole po the whole consumer experience of purchasing the product through to trying it, wearing it. Um, I didn't want to judge it on him as a person, but I am going to just run through a few things right now. John Cookian is a very, very controversial person. John Cookian is the owner of this brand. He is a YouTuber who has a drama channel and he is very, very critical of other YouTubers who bring out makeup, who launch products. 
One thing that came to mind was he was very, very critical of Laura Lee. She's a beauty YouTuber. She launched her first product, which was an eyeshadow palette called Cat's Pajamas. He tore her a new a-hole, legit. Like he went in on her. He absolutely went in on the product. He said that the palette wasn't cohesive, that it didn't make sense the way she had a silver outer and then roses on the inside. Um, the whole brand didn't make sense. The fact it was called Cat's Pajamas didn't make sense. And he also went in on the website as well, saying the website was awful, that there was spelling mistakes on there. And I, to be honest, I just feel like that's quite hypocritical. He does not have the best website. Um, it hasn't been designed very well. Um, I don't know if he did it himself or what happened, but the website is not great. I also feel like he went in on her branding, but what branding is there on his product? He has the outer packaging, but ultimately everyone will throw away the outer packaging. I certainly will, to be fair. So all I'm left with is this. It has zero branding on it. You couldn't even say it's not cohesive because there is no branding on it. And I just feel like if you're going to preach, you have to follow um, those own preachings. In terms of the other products he released, he did release some... Um, liquid lipsticks, some matte liquid lipsticks and he released a shade called Dirty Money and it was a green, olivey green shade and Dirty Money is the shade of one of Jeffree Star's liquid lipsticks. John Cookian apparently hates Jeffree Star, he calls him Voldemort, he's made a lot of videos about Jeffree Star and how he doesn't like him, about various things about him and so he obviously knows who Jeffree Star is. You would think he would know about the different products in his cosmetics line. And so to name a shade of liquid lipstick after a liquid lipstick in Jeffree Star's range is just very odd to me. And the actual Jeffree Star shade and the John Cookian shade, Dirty Money, are very, very similar. They're both green shades with a sort of olivey undertone. And I'm not sure if that could have been a to create drama so Jeffree Star to comment on this online and sort of go after John Cookie and saying why are you copying me in order to create buzz around Cookie's brand and to generate more sales it just seems very odd to me that you would go in on someone and then name one of your lipstick shades after one of his lipstick shades and not expect people to be like whoa that's kind of weird um who knows? There's a lot of controversy as well around John Cookian and the way he went about the launch of these products. He wrote in the actual code of his website, server overload. So whenever you went onto the homepage of his website, it came up with Cookian server overload. And that kind of makes people think, oh goodness, right, okay, I better buy this as soon as the website is back online. I better buy it up as soon as possible because the website's overloaded. Everyone's buying it you know, it creates that sort of rush to purchase. But it actually turns out he'd actually written that in the code of his website. Um, I feel like if you're having server problems, you should just write something like, we are experiencing server problems, please come back later. If you actually get a real server error, it comes up with a totally different error. So it was actually written in his code for that to automatically come up anytime anyone went on the homepage. So I feel like that was probably the wrong move. Why he did that, you know, he did go into that in one of his videos and said it wasn't anything shady. I feel like there are a lot of other messages you could have written on the website if you wanted to have time to sort of do things to your website and not have people purchasing just at that moment. You could have written other things on there. So I just thought that was a bit strange as well. But I bought this product simply to, as I said, review the whole consumer experience, really just look at the product this time around, I guess. What I'm going to do is if I decide to repeat purchase from Cookie In, I will really go and do my research, really, really look into the person that actually owns the brand. But those are the sort of immediate things that, co that come to my mind whenever I think of John Cookie In. And I'm not going to try not to let that affect my review of this product. I'm really going to try to just be sort of Sweden and all this and really try not to let that interfere with my review but um, a lot of people have been critical of other reviewers of the product who have said, oh, I don't want to you know, mention anything to do with John Cookie and I'm just going to review the product. People are saying, well, no, you should know who you're buying from. You should know what they're about. You should have an opinion. Those are the opinions that came to my mind whenever I bought this. I'm putting it out there. However, when I actually go to review the product, I'm just going to look at the product on its own. 
But let's just go ahead and get into the actual products. The claims on the website are that these pigments are made with the highest quality ingredients imported from Italy, Germany and Japan. They are smooth, buildable, blendable with no glitter and the brand is cruelty free. Let's start off with Shook here. I just wanted to mention that the side of this is like all covered in pigment. If I take that out there, it is like covered in pigment. I will go ahead and just do a quick swatch of that with my finger. There you go there. I'm then gonna do a brush swatch. Beside that, I have two of the same flat packer brushes. These are just from Kira Daily. I'm going to use one side for one shade, the other side for the other shade, and then the final you know, brush for the third shade. So I'm just going to go in here dry and just pick up a little bit. So that's just a few wee taps. So you can see these definitely perform better with your finger. Next, let's go into titties. God, I hate that name. Again, it's just a bit messy. There's pigment sort of everywhere. Go in there. Not performing great with a brush. And let's just do salvage. There you are there. Wow, that is so bad. Oh my God. Wow, that is so bad. Flip. There you go. That is literally like nothing. So I feel like they did feel smooth and buttery when I touched them with my finger, but with the brush, they give like zero pigment. They're patchy, they're not pigmented, they're not opaque. They're definitely different if you use a finger. So here it looks beautiful, lovely and shimmery. It's got no glitter in it, but it's just very like shimmery and pearlescent. It's very opaque, really good pigment. Feels nice actually, but the brush swatches are just totally different. But I guess it really depends on how it performs on my eye. So I'm just gonna take this shit here, it's called Pancakes, and it is from the Sof Times Makeup Revolution um, collaboration palette. I'm just using my fluffy blending brush by Morphe, and I'm just going to place this sort of all over my lid. I do have a little bit of mascara on, so I'm just going to put on falsies after this. So I'm just laying down that to help the shadows blend and also create a nice transition. I might just go in with a little bit of a darker shade. This is the shade Cup of Tea. I'm just gonna place a little bit of that in my actual crease. So that's just a little bit darker. Then I'm gonna take this shade Salvage and then really put it in that outer portion of my eye. So just right out here. Bring it across a little bit so there you go there so i'm just going to go back in here and try to build up that color it's not it's quite lackluster to be fair it's really not coming out very well I'm just going to go back in with that um, cup of tea shade and just blend out the edges getting a little bit of fallout but it's not too bad i mean like worse. So that blend was quite nice. I just don't think like the pigment was great. I expected it to be you know as dark as it was there. I did build it up quite a bit and it has blended nicely. I just feel like it has a lot of depth to the colour. Um, it is nice and the more you blend out it sort of goes more matte and then it is more shimmery right in here where I've built it up loads. But let's just move on to the shade Titties. I'm gonna go in with my flat packer brush and just try to pack this on to my mobile lid. I've really, really, really packed that on there. So hopefully this turns out nice. And then just blend those edges. And then I'm just gonna take Shook here and put it underneath my lower lash line. I packed that on absolutely loads onto the brush and it just doesn't seem to be you know, packing as much of a punch as I wanted. Like it looks really, really dense on there. And then it doesn't seem to come off very well. It's kind of patchy there. Not sure if you can see, but it's just quite patchy. Getting a lot of fallout, you know, with like building it up, building it up. You can just see, it just doesn't really go on. See, it's so like patchy and like, doesn't come off on your lid very well and I mean it comes off the brush but it just doesn't show up that is the uh, 
best I'm getting. I'm just gonna pop on a little bit of this shit here from the Soph Times Makeup Revolution Highlighter Palette. This is a really, really nice one. I'm just gonna pop that in my inner corner. So there we are there. So I'll just dust all of this off frig. You can see it's just left all sort of pigment on my face. I look like I have a real red nose now. Again, it's happened there. I should have like baked under my face. Be aware that, flip that looks really bad, um, that you definitely have to bake under this. The fallout, there's quite a lot of fallout and it really, really stays put. I'm just gonna stick on some eyeliner and some lashes and I'll be right back. So I'm back, I just put on some of my Bobbi Brown Longwear Gel Eyeliner and my Ardell Demi Wispies. I did have mascara on from the start of this video because I wore my makeup all day so I had to have mascara on otherwise I would look a bit insane throughout the day so um, I've just put on some falsies on top and here is the finished look I did put on a little bit of the shade Nightmare which is the black shade from the Sooth Times Makeup Revolution eyeshadow palette just to sort of blend my eyeliner in with the look but here is it all finished So the ultimate question is, would I recommend these? And the answer is no. I just think the whole consumer experience has just been a bit off from the website um, and ordering the product to receiving it and the packaging and the packaging not being that great on the inside. I don't really know how I'm gonna store these. Um, I guess I'm just gonna have to keep them in this packaging and store them inside my makeup um, table because it's not really something that I would want to display. And then the price is just, to me, a bit off. So I just think it's slightly overpriced. I think I would rather go to Makeup Revolution and buy one of their palettes, which is sort of on par price-wise, where you get a wider range of shades. They're all really, really nice shades. You also get really nice packaging. You also get a nice mirror in most of the palettes as well. So. I just think it is overpriced, especially for three shades. They smell really bad. Um, once you put them on your face, you can't smell them, but whenever you open them, put them up to your nose, they smell really, really bad. I also think that the shades aren't really, they are cohesive in that you can make them work together and create a look with them. But I just think for the average makeup wearer who wants to wear makeup day to day, these products won't really work together because they do create quite a dramatic colorful look. I guess you could use each individual shade to work into a look and make it more natural but I just think if you're buying this to use on a regular basis, use all three shades together, um, I just think you'll find that it does create a very colorful look that isn't really day to day and maybe that's what you're going for but for me I'm not really going to get a lot of use out of these eyeshadows um, especially because they're all a pearlescent finish as well so I just think that it would have been nicer to have a mix of pearlescent matte a transition shade all in a little palette and then it maybe would have been worth the price then in terms of how the actual product felt and it worked the product felt buttery whenever I was touching it with my finger but whenever I swatched it with a brush it really really had very little pigment quite dusty patchy not great. Working it on the eyes, the shade Salvage did blend across my eye. I did have to build it up quite a lot. It does have a nice sort of richness to the colour. Whenever you blend out it does go slightly matter and then where you've built it up sort of in the crease it does keep its pearlescence. Um, but it wasn't amazing. It had quite a lot of fallout. The shade Titties actually was my favourite, the one that I just packed on my lid. It was, um, gave a nice finish. I did pack a lot onto my brush, but it was, it was nice. Then the shade Shook I put under my eyelids. I did not like that for under my eyes whatsoever. It didn't blend, it didn't transfer onto my eyelid very well at all. I packed loads onto the brush, but it just wasn't, the colour wasn't transferring onto my eye. Hard to blend. Had to pack it on loads. Get, again, like all these have quite a bit of fallout, so it felt all over my face. I think that I can make these work. I will probably use them going forward, but I can't see me using them all the time. I just think, you know, for them being so pearlescent, I'll probably just use them as over the lid shades. I think these are shades that are best packed onto the lid and not sort of blended because to me, whenever I blend an eyeshadow across my crease, I want a matte shade because it really creates that contour on my eyes. I don't really use a pearlescent, shiny sort of shade 
on my crease because it brings that part of your eye forward rather than put, putting it back and creating that nice crease on your eyelid. So in that sense, they did blend across my crease, but I just won't use them for that. I'll probably just use them to pack onto my lid. I do think the titty shade packed on well, give a nice punch, really, really nice. Um, but yeah, I just don't think I'm gonna get a lot of use out of these. There are better eyeshadows out there. Makeup Revolution do great eyeshadows and they're so cheap and you get such a wide range in their palettes. I just don't really feel the need to add these to my collection. So I wouldn't repurchase these if I was given a chance to go back in time and purchase them. I'm glad I purchased them so I can do this review for you, but I just don't think they're sort of worth it to be fair. You can make them work if you do already own them. Anyway, I really hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and comment down below with any questions you have. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more from me and hit the little notification bell to receive a notification every time I upload. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.